How's it going guys? Welcome to another Soul Encoded tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing our JavaScript series and we'll cover data structures, objects, and arrays. So in this particular write-up, I believe we'll need to do two parts once again, but the first half of this uh, lesson will be geared towards kind of theory and just kind of introducing you to um, the concept of like using an object in JavaScript and you know how to organize your data in a certain way so that you could manipulate it and work with it a lot better. So the first section is talking about data sets. What are data sets? So just think of data sets as uh, any collection of data, right? In the real world, do you rarely just work with one value at a time? We have already gone over arrays, but let's quickly talk about how you can have an array and then how do you access values inside of an array? So let's say one, two, three, four, five. We have quickly defined an array here. And how do you get like number two, the value two out of this array? Um, the simplest way is actually just using square brackets notations and you want to give it the index that you're looking for. You guys have to remember that arrays start with an index of zero. So to get number two, the value two, you actually have to do one. So let's go ahead and log that in. So I just made a playgrounds JS file and I'm just running it through Node. You guys should be very familiar with this kind of process by now. So by just giving you as a quick reminder. Moving on. So that's just arrays in a very simple nutshell. Um, but all JavaScript objects that you have seen so far, and when I mean JavaScript objects, I just mean um, basically everything in JavaScript is an object. So JavaScript objects has what are called properties and methods. And think of properties as just values that you could directly access through JavaScript and methods are just functions attached to your object. Um, so enough talking, let's kind of look at what an object, like let's look at the architecture of an object. So let's create an object, var object, and so far. Okay, so this object that I just created, the it's just a very random, you know, list of key value pairs, we call them. But it's a data set where we're organizing the information about some random object into this kind of format. And if we want to access it, there's two ways to access it. We could say object, this is the square bracket notation, and then we say object, and then we pass in um, the string of the key name. So here, if we did this and logged it in, like so, we'll get John. And all that's doing is it's accessing this particular key value pair. Now, another way to um, access your properties inside your objects is using the dot notation and all you do is say you say the variable name and you hit dot and then you can say age so or and then you say the key name you type in the key name and 29 all right so that's kind of how you access properties and define properties in an object now, what about methods? All methods are, are just functions attached to your objects. Let's create like a test. So let's um, add the print function. We'll name it print, the key name it will be print. And then we'll say function uh, expects a string and then we'll log that string here, here. And then let's um, call that function, invoke that function print and let's make sure to pass it a string. And we get hello world. So that's a method that's attached to an object. So why is this architecture important? Um, it's the reason why this is so important. This is such an important concept to understand is because everything in JavaScript is object. So it's very important to understand this entire kind of architecture. So basically our basic types such as boolean, string, number, array, these basic data types are actually just objects and they have their properties and they have their methods. For example, we have already gone over an array property. So let's create an array really quickly. R, one, two, three. 
And let's say that we want to try to find the length of this array. All we would do is we would say array.length. And we get three. And the reason why that works is because array dot length dot the length portion is just a property attached to the array object so this is very powerful in javascript because now you have access to every array that you create every string that you create you have access to a whole bunch of methods and properties that the javascript language has and in this particular lesson or actually the next lesson we'll go over most useful of these methods and properties in great detail. Before we move on to kind of the next section of this, I want to briefly talk about a slight interesting behavior of objects. So let me copy this over right here. So these two objects have the same key value pairs. And by key value pairs, again, it just means this is the key and this is the value. Um, and they're denoted, they're separated by colons. Um, these two objects, object one and object two, they may, like to us, in, they're identical, right? But in JavaScript, they're considered to be not the same because they're actually referencing different objects in the in memory. And of course, their values are the same. Uh, the key values are the same, but the object itself is different. So let's go ahead and print that out. And as you can see, it is false. So uh, the reason why I show you this is because later on you might do some checks where you say objects equal object one equals object two, assuming that be and because all of their key value pairs are the same, you think they're the same, but that is not entirely the case. In fact, there will be a challenge where you write a deep equals function where you compare two objects to one another and then uh, basically says if all of their key values are the same then they're actually true so that's another little challenge that we're gonna do but for now just understand that two objects when they're equal to each other they're actually not equal to each other um, moving on uh, let's quickly talk about a kind of an important concept which is how do you digitally represent something that's in the real world that's a very important concept to always think about because the correlation is not necessarily always the same, right? You may have something in the real world, like take hamburgers, for example. How do you represent that, represent that in code? It's a pretty hard thing to do. And we'll, go, we'll get into object-oriented programming and things like that, but just think about that. Now, let's, let's say that we have like a chessboard or something like that. How do you represent this in like a digital world? So I've copied this example over right here. And this is a chessboard. And I hope you guys can see why this representation makes sense. Um, let's say that I wanted to get the black queen. How do I do that? Then I all I would have to do is black queen's right here. So that if you look at the chessboard, it's in the first index, which is zero, right? You remember array star at zero index. And then it's in the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4th uh, place. So obviously we do we have to do 0, 1, 2, and 3. So that means it's 3. So that gives us this. And then if we want a white rook, it's right here, or I guess right here. So it would actually it could this could work with um, 7, 0 or or 7, 7. And let's go ahead and print that out like so. And you can see we get the pieces that we want. And with this, you could imagine creating like a video game out of this, right? You could have functions that grabs uh, the chess piece that you want, and then you could move them to like a different location. For example, let's say that I want to move this um, black pawn to a different one space forward, right? So I could first call the chessboard. And then we could say, so that's in the first place, right? So first index, and then the zeroth one. So now this becomes xx, right? So this is essentially me saying, oh, I want to make this space empty. Now the next thing I need to do is I could say chessboard, and then we got to move up one and zero. Sorry, this should be equals, not equals, equals. Uh, this is an assignment versus boolean checks, right? 
and then we say black pawn. So with just these two small steps, I have moved the black pawn for one piece. And now if we print these two locations, um, let me try printing the chessboard. So when I when you when I print the chessboard, you can see that the pawn has moved forward one space. So it's such a simple concept, but you could imagine now just have just being able to access the array, change the positions of them, you could create a chess game. So this is like the start of a chess game. You just have to add the rules and add the functions that governs this entire chess game, and you will ha you'll be you're well on your way to make your first program essentially. So that's essentially it for this section. The next sections are one of the core things that you'll use. It, it will be such a helpful lesson. So uh, we're going over arrays, strings, and objects, and the different properties and methods that are attached to them. And honestly, those are like the most commonly use methods that you need to start memorizing um, as you're programming and you'll use them a lot. So the challenges for this particular lesson is there's two challenges. Um, one is tic-tac-toe. So I just showed you how to make a chessboard. Um, there's a good example of it, but uh, try to make tic-tac-toe. So why don't you first uh, try to make this tic-tac-toe representation in an array, exactly as is. So the next challenge is object access. It's, it's a super simple challenge. All it is, is I created this random human object. It's called Jake Larson, or his name's Jake Larson. And this is kind of how you would represent, you know, a, a person, right, in an object form. Um, super simplified version, but all you have to do is log this person's full name, you know, change his hobbies to something else. I'm kind of I'm kind of mixing um, nested objects and you know having arrays inside of an object, so things like that. So just um, there's just three things to do. So go ahead and try to solve these two challenges. And that's a, that's it for this particular tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Be prepared.